Good morning. Let us all pray. Return to God, our Father, now we thank you for all of your many blessings as we come before you, Father, this day where we have chosen to celebrate our mothers. We thank God for all of them. And, Father, we are cognizant of what's going on in our world, but yet you are still God, and beside you there is none other. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. We welcome you uh, by way of social media to our morning worship service, and we are glad that you are here with us. We bring you greetings from the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. To all of our mothers, we say happy Mother's Day to you. We realize and we are cognizant of the fact that for some, this is not a happy day. Uh, for God have called mom home. We are cognizant of you and we are praying for your strength in the Lord. As we make ready for our worship now, our ministers of music will come in their own way by the aid of the Holy Spirit minister to us through song, and then we are hear word from the Lord. Let's hear ye then. Yeah. 
The eternal God, our Father, now we thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for grace and we thank you for mercy. As we make ready to preach your word, give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The word may go forth. Those that are hopeless may find hope. People with tears stained eyes, eyes will be water be transformed to tears of sorrow to tears of joy. We thank you in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. This morning to the triune Godhead, to these ministers of music that is present with me, to our Mount Zion family and friends listening by way of social media we're glad that you're here with us this morning again we want to say mother's day to all of our mothers and uh, we are cognizant of those mothers who are gone home to be with the lord our prayer is with you on this day in the gospel according to saint luke chapter 7 <clears throat> the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 7. Begin reading at verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, and the only son of his mother, she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bar, that the boy that bare him that stood still. And he the young man, I say unto you, Arise. And he, he, he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and they delivered him to his mother. For the sake of emphasis, we want to look at verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. I want to talk on this thought. Jesus knows what you're going through. Jesus knows what you are going through. As we look at our text that is before us, a scene in the tiny hamlet town called Nain. And as we begin to see Jesus begin to do the impossible and the incredible one more time. Jesus can and will come into your situation and turn a hopeless situation into a positive situation. Jesus knows everything that you're feeling and going through. In chapter 7 of, of Luke's gospel, in verse 1, Capern Jesus was in Capernaum, he was going to Nain, and it was a 45-mile walk. Anywhere between two to five days from Capernaum to Nain was a 45-mile walk. But it wasn't unusual for Jesus to go a long distance for those he loved. He loved us so much. He came a long distance. Just to save us. He came from heaven to earth. To show the way. From the earth to the cross. My debt to pay. From the cross to the grave. And from the grave to the sky. Lord we lift your name on high. Jesus have come a long way just to seal our salvation. And I wonder if there's anybody listening can testify that you are glad that he came a long way. 
And he came not only a long way, he came all the way. And even in the situation that we're going in now, I can still feel the presence of my Savior in the form of the Holy Spirit. I wish I had somebody that can testify with me. As we look at the text that is set before us, it is a sad scene. It is a horrific scene. And one thing I want you to know, number one, Jesus knows about your dark situations. He knows about it because in verse 12, you will discover when Jesus came to name that day, he did not arrive at a joyous occasion. He did not arrive while people were singing and dancing. He didn't arrive when people were celebrating and shouting with joy. But when he arrived, he arrived in a town called Nain, which really means beauty. But there was no beauty at this scene when Jesus shows up. For death had invaded the little town of Nain. Jesus, and as it was customs of that day, the people of the city had stopped what they were doing and had joined the funeral procession as they made their way through the town. This, this mother would have been followed by those who carried the coffin that contained the body of her son. Those that are bringing up the real would have been in the townsfolk and who, out of respect of the death of her son, would be right along with her. Death has come and it has brought with it all the cruelness, all the heartache, that it possess. Here he finds a mother whose heart's been broken. He finds a mother in a dark situation. He finds a mother in a hopeless situation because the text says that she is a widow. Now her son has passed and she won't have anyone to take care of her. She would be resorted to begging a prostitution, but now she is in a dark situation. And here is your praise cue. When things have gotten to the point where it seems that you just see no way out, that's when Jesus shows up. He shows up when the situation look hopeless. He shows up when it seems that all doors been closed. He shows up when it seems that your situation cannot be reversed. I wish I had somebody to testify with me this morning that when I was at my wit's end, when I was at the point of straight desperation, when I was at the point of hurt and harm with no hope in sight, Jesus still showed up. And when he showed up, he made a way out of young way, no way. Her son is lying there motionless, cannot be moved, will not move. She, he had ears but couldn't hear. He had a head but couldn't think. He had legs but couldn't walk here. He was dead. He was gone. And many mothers are feeling that right now, that their children are not physically dead, but they are dead to their instructions. They are dead to their rules. They are dead to the solutions to their problems. They are dead out of respect for their parents. They are dead in a dark situation. But Jesus can still come and touch that child. You must realize that you haven't always been with the Lord yourself. You haven't always loved church yourself. You haven't always obeyed your parents yourself. And the same way God touched you, he can touch your child again. Jesus comes and he sees her struggling. He sees her hurt. He sees the darkness that has surrounded her. This poor woman has no one left to take care of her. She's probably a woman of age and there were no welfare or assistance available for widows in this time. She was all alone. She was helpless. She was caught up in a desperate condition. She has nothing and no one to look forward to except poverty and despair. But when she was at rock bottom, the true rock that's at the bottom was there to lift her up again. 
She has nowhere to go. She has nobody to turn to. She finds herself trapped in a helpless and hopeless situation. What I'm trying to tell you this morning, that many of us have found ourselves trapped. We found ourselves in a situation and found ourselves powerless to change the problem that we were dealing with. But I thank God when we found ourselves powerless, the powerful will show up. Sometimes we think we got the power to God allow us to get in a situation that the little power you have, the little money you have, can't buy your way out of it. You don't have no other choice but to rely and lean and depend on Jesus. And now, here she is. She's helpless. She's hurt. She's full of harm. And she don't know what's going to happen on tomorrow. But then that's when Jesus shows up. The text says, watch the text, when, when, she, when he came to Nain, the Bible says in verse 12 that he came now to the gate of the city, behold, there her son was being carried out. Now we need to understand Nain, the city, was, it was like a hill. The city was on the top, but the cemetery was at the bottom. At the bottom, there was a gate. And you got to enter the gate and go to the cemetery. Let me say it again. The city was out on the hill. You had to go down the hill to go through the gate. Look, at one time, he didn't come when she was up on the hill. He came when she was down to the lowest part of her life. And I wish I had somebody to testify that that's when he shows up and he shows out. And he does his best when we are down to the lowest part in our lives. And so now, when, when he saw her, the Bible says that he had compassion on her. In other words, look at Jesus says in verse 13. He says, he says, weep not. In other words, he didn't tell her not to cry because of the death of her son. He was, in essence, he was saying to her, your weeping is coming to an end. I wish I had somebody to testify. Let me say it again. He, he was not telling her not to weep because of the passing of her child. She's a mother. Of course, she's going to weep. But he is saying, your weeping has come to an end. And I wish I had somebody to know when Jesus says it's coming to an end, you can bet it everything on it, baby. It comes to an end because he means what he says and he says what he means. One day, the trouble you're going through is going to come to an end. One day, the dark situation you're dealing with is going to come to an end. One day, the people who've been ridiculing you and criticizing you and calling you everything but a child of God, it's going to come to an end. And when it comes to an end, you need to praise God. Matter of fact, let me back that thing up. While it's still going on, you need to praise God. While they still lying on you, you need to praise God. While the situation is still dark, you need to praise God. Listen, he tells the woman to weep not even before he did anything. You must look, it's time to counsel your pity party. It's time to stop feeling sorry for yourself. It's time to get up and know God is still able. He says, weep not. He says, the time of your weeping has come to an end. And one thing I love about Jesus, he's not going to tell you something and not going to back it up. I wish I had somebody to testify. That would make the late, great Muhammad Ali the best because he was able to predict the round. And he just didn't talk noise, but he backed it up. And that's one thing I love about Jesus. He's just not making noise. When he says something, he'll back it up. If he told me to call on him in the day of trouble, he will deliver. Guess what? He'll back it up. If the Bible says, bless the Lord at all times and praise shall continue to be in my mouth, I will do that because God will back it up. I wish somebody can testify and say, whatever he said he's going to do, he's going to back it up. If he's going to feed you, he's going to back it up. He's going to take care of you. He's going to have to pack up his word. He can back it up. And look, the proof is in the text that he can back it up because he told in verse 13, the time of your weeping has come to an end. And then watch this, mothers. He came and touched the bar that 
Boyer, the, the, the young man that stood still, and he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Now watch this. Watch the text. He didn't touch the child. He touched what was holding the child. And that what was holding the child had to let the child go. I need to talk to a mother or parent right now that something is holding your child. It might be alcohol. It might be drugs. It might be a harsh lifestyle. It might be a rebellion. It might be disrespect. Whatever it is that's holding your child, Jesus can touch it and it has to let your child go. And even while it's holding your child, Jesus telling you to stop crying about it because I've got the situation in the palm of my hand. I wish I had somebody to testify that God is able. He touched the bar, and then he, talk, then he talked to the young man. Young man, I say unto thee, arise. And look, the Bible says, and the young man, the dead, he that, verse 15, he that was dead, sat up, began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. That is your praise cue right there. Not only... She was in a dark place, in a desperate place. But then now, even in the midst of that, Jesus delivered unto her what she needed. I thank God the story didn't end when he first met her. I thank God the story didn't end that, it, look, he even, they didn't even make it to the graveyard. He, he stopped the funeral procession and he blessed that mother and he blessed that child. And the little band of mourners who were mourning with her, now they are praising with her because God has just done something good. I wish I had somebody to testify. God can change a mourning situation into a celebration if you just only trust and believe on him. Well, As I get ready to leave you here, two groups met. One group was headed to the cemetery. Another group was headed to the city. But in this text, two sons met. One son was dead and the other son was alive. Two sufferers met. The mother was suffering and Jesus would be the sufferer for all mankind. Two enemies met right there. Life and death met at the crossroads, but life took over death because Jesus is the light of the world. He is the resurrection. And when Jesus arrived in name that afternoon, he arrived during a time of desperation. He arrived during a time of death. And notice he overcame both of them. The woman who was desperate, he had compassion on her. Death that had taken her son. Jesus touched the bow. And the boy got up and began to speak. And Jesus said, here it is. I deliver your son unto you. You just missed it when Jesus first showed up. Her son was in a place of no return. But when Jesus got through, he delivered her son safe and sound. Some mother out there, you're worried about your child. You've been praying for your child. But let me tell you, Jesus, he has a way to make things right again. And I wonder, is there anybody here can testify that the Lord's been good to you? He brought you from a mighty long way he kept you when you could not keep yourself but oh I thank God for joy weeping may endure but a night but joy will come in the morning Jesus he knows what you are going through 
He knows about your dark situation. He knows about your desperate situation. And he knows how to deliver you. And I wonder, is there anybody here can say, I've been delivered, I've been in hell and high water, but the Lord, he delivered me. And I want to praise my God right now. Mothers, I thank God for you. I thank God for the sacrifices you made. But right now, I've got to talk about Jesus. He died on an old rugged cross, putting me in a borrowed tomb. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Do you believe that the Lord got up? Do you believe that he's got all power? Somebody may be saying, how is he preaching with an empty church house? Well, the church house may be empty, but the church is full to capacity. You don't have to be here to praise my God. Wherever you are right now, you ought to give him praise. Had he been good to you? He knows what you're going through. Isn't it all right? Say yeah. Can you just say yeah? Ah, say yeah. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Ah, he will. He will. Yes, he will. He knows what you're going through. Mama, he knows. Daddy that has to play the role of a mama, he knows what you're going through. And those whose mother is not here, and you're going through a hard ordeal, he still knows what you're going through. To those mothers who have lost a child, he knows what you're going through. He knows what you're feeling, He's cognizant of what you have in your heart and what's going on in your mind. He knows what you're going through. No one has all the answers to what God allows in his permissive will and his sovereign way. We don't have the answers. Before I close, let me just uh, continue to speak to those hurting ones today. But many of us are celebrating our mothers. I thank God for my mother who done so much for us. But I want to be cognizant of those that are hurting right now. Either your mother is gone or that mother that has lost a child. He still knows what you're going through. He has compassion on you. His eye is forever upon you. He loves you and he cares for you. Now to those mothers, people whose mother is still alive and you barely keep in touch with her. You barely pick up the phone to call her unless you want something from her. Let me talk to you. Appreciate your mother more than that. Contact her every chance you get. Call her every chance and opportunity you have. We only get one mother and sometimes we don't get along. Appreciate her. Love her. Take care of her. Because when you couldn't take care of yourself, she took care of you. I'm a product of a single parent home. Mother raised three children. And she did the best she can and she did the best that any mother could do. Many times I would hear my mother in her bedroom pray for us. And I'm where I am right now because God heard a mother's prayer. 
Now we open the doors to you. We invite Jesus to you. Those of you who are lost and don't know your way, he knows what you're going through. He knows your dark situation. He knows your desperate situation. And he can deliver you in the midst of those situations. Just as he delivered that widow's son back to her. He gave her hope again. He gave her joy again. And he can do the same for you. I invite him to you. I, I give him to you. I introduce him to you. You invite him into your life. To receive him just as you are. And watch how he takes care of you. Those who are listening. I want you to do something for me. In your own way and whatever emoji you use. I want you to think of that time. If Jesus wouldn't have intervened in your life, he wouldn't be here right now. However way you do it, I want you to send God a praise right now. Yes, Lord. After you do it physically, send it through the social media. We, we let people see the gossip. We let people see all the bad things we say. Just let them see us praising God. Send a praise out to him. Think of that moment. If God wouldn't have intervened, you wouldn't be here right now. Give God the praise and give God the glory. We thank you for what all you have done. Let me tell the Mount Zion members, we thank you so much for what you're doing. Uh, we thank God for your giving. Oh my God, you are giving spectacular, just as though we were still in the presence of the sanctuary. We thank God for your continue to do what you're doing. And we will be together soon. As we get ready to leave this place with never God's presence, we thank you and we glorify you. And if you're at home saying this with me, let the church say amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. Let the church say Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let's sing it one more time. Let the church say amen. Let the church say God has spoken. Let the church. I want to sing it one more time. Mm -hmm. Sing with me. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God. Let the church Eternal God, our Father, we thank you as we leave this place but never your presence. Father, we want to send a special prayer to Sister Janice Ellis and her family as they are in bereavement right now. But yet, God, we know that you're able. All of our Mount Zion members are sick and shedding and all of our members that are going through hurt and headache and heartache right now, we ask you to keep them. Not only Mount Zion, but everybody that sounds under my weak voice. Father, we know you can. We know you will. Now may the grace of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule abide henceforth and forevermore. The church respond by saying, Amen. God bless you. Until next time, stay safe. Stay prayed up, stay in God's will, stay in God's way, and if possible, stay indoors. Be blessed. God bless you.